the last type of problem we have is what I call a backwards problem or an inverse problem where we're going to start with a rectangular equation and I want to create a parametric equation or function that would have the same graph. So it's exactly the opposite uh, order that the last problem did. So last problem we got down to a rectangular equation uh, from a parametric function or parametric equations. Now we want to go the opposite direction. Find a parametric function for this right here. There are uh, a few ways to do this. The way that uses the least amount of thinking is, uh, you, and you can use this method anytime. So I already have this solve for y. So if this is already solved for y, if you knew what x was, you would know what y was right away. So when y is written as a function of x, we're going to just let x equal t. The reason is, if you have x is equal to t, well then what is y? y is x squared minus 4, which is now t squared minus 4. Oh, look at that. We got an x and a y parametric equation. That's really all we need. So I'll just write this. Uh, h of t is equal to x function is t, the y function, t squared minus 4. That's really all there is to... Uh, converting as long as y is a function of x already. If conversely x is a function of y, so what does that mean? x equals sum f of y. So what did we do last time? let, so last time we let x equal t, this time we're going to let y equal t. And then what is x? x is, well normally x is f of y, all I'm going to do is take out y and replace it with t. So x is f of t, and then our final, I'll use capital G for our function here, our final answer will be, what is the x? The x is that little f of t, and what is y? y is just t. So in this case, t showed up in the y coordinate. and the other case, t showed up in the x coordinate. So this is a way to uh, very quickly turn a single rectangular function into a parametric function or parametric equations. And if you're uh, if you're asked for the parametric equations, I'll circle those in blue. These are the equations. right there. So it just depends if you're asked for the equations of the function. All right, so now you should be thinking, well, okay, great. When y is a function of x, go this way. When x is a function of y, go that way. What happens if neither is a function of the other? So for example, here we go. You can't solve just for x or just for y. You'll get a plus minus square root. So how do we deal with that situation when you can't just solve for x or for y? So we'll do that last example here. So the reason I can't solve for x or y, same exact problem I would have had before because they're both squared. So if I attempted to, uh, my next step would be plus or minus. And it's that plus or minus that is gonna give us the trouble. Uh, so I can't solve for x or for y explicitly. So that's out. Now let's look at this. 
And I'm going to change the form a tiny bit. I'm going to write this as y squared over 3 squared equals 1. And I'm going to factor out that power. Now, do I know a trig relationship that looks like thing squared minus another thing squared equals 1? Not off the top of my head. So what I'm going to do is just add that y over 3 squared to the other side. All right, so now we want to think about uh, what Pythagorean identity has trig function squared equals trig function squared plus 1. First one that comes to my mind is the tangent and secant relationship. Now, normally I write it as tangent squared theta. Oh, no, now I'm forgetting it. <laughs> tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. Oh, I hope that's right. Let's run back, chapter 10, trig IDs, need to get this right. Here we go. Yep, tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. All right. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. Please tell me that's what I wrote, tangent squared plus 1. Eventually, tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. All right, so we got the right identity. I did have to work a little bit to get this uh, in this form. All right, so I'm gonna, I'll just write it right below in blue. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do something a little silly. Not really change it much at all, and blue. Now, theta is just a variable I chose to put here. We're trying to go to uh, t. I'll use the variable t instead. We're trying to go to uh, equations with the variable t in it. And I'm going to use this notation right here. So I'm just rewriting this in the form that it's written, in the form that, that I've already started in. All right, so what do I match up? It's pretty clear what's a match up. I'll use a highlighter, those two, and those two. Ooh. So I did make a mistake here. What did I not match up? That's not y equals tangent t. y over 3 equals tangent t. We're almost there. Just got to solve for y now. So these are our parametric equations now. Uh, generally, when I ask you to convert, I won't... Uh, ask you explicitly what uh, t values work here. Obviously, secants and tangents, you have to be careful. You can be divided by zero. Uh, but I'm not going to go uh, so far into this type of question. So that'll be, you just find the uh, two equations and write them down. And of course, how do we write this if we want to go into a, a function form? h of t, x goes first, seek, and then 3 so that would be function, parametric function notation right there.